welcome everyone to our webinar today. This is our business builder webinar on how to stop rogue and disgruntled employees from hurting your business. I'm Christy Thompson and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our host and our special guest for the day. Also just a few key items. Um, we're gonna keep everybody muted until the end, but if you have any questions, put them, pop them into the chat or the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer them throughout the presentation. Now, we may not be able to get to it in the middle of the presentation, but we'll certainly answer them all at the end. So I'd like to go ahead and introduce Philip Long. He is a technologist and entrepreneur who specializes in providing technology solutions and security consulting to businesses along the Gulf Coast. So he's been in the IT industry for over 20 years. He has 600 plus clients from Gulfport to Dothan. And he is the current owner of five businesses. He's also a certified information system security professional, a CISSP, and has a new accreditation um, CMMC. So, and now I'm gonna introduce you to our guest speaker, Ikram. So he is the CEO of MVP Networks and um, he has been in the information systems and business process professional for over 25 years in IT consulting, healthcare IT, manufacturing, and network infrastructure. He has a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Buffalo, and he's also an author of Computer Should Just Work. He has certifications including MCP, CCNA, SAP Business One, um, Avaya Professional, VCP, HPE Professional. So I'm going to turn this over to our host, Philip Long. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Ikram, for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. And I think we're going to talk about a topic today that is very, uh, I think, uh, timely. It's always there, but uh, I think there is just a, such a dynamic that's going on today with, uh, you know, we had the resignation nation and then we jumped right into the uh, the, the deal where, you know, just a lot of turnover happening uh, throughout all industries. I, I see this, you know, as a business owner, I'm sure Ikram, you've seen this as well, kind of, um, you know, weigh in on your what you're seeing as it relates to rogue employees and just turnover in general or, or just the employee uh, marketplace. I think you're muted. We can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. All right. You should uh, have a little tie on when you say that. <laughs> Remember the old Verizon? I think it was Verizon. Verizon yeah. yeah, I look. I look like the guy with the hat, with the glasses. Yeah, a little can bit. You, can you sure. hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I agree with you. I mean, uh, it's the mass resignation. It happened uh, last year. We've we've had we we suffered through it as well. And and uh, people got comfortable staying home. And people always wonder if uh, the grass is greener on the other side. And what ends up happening is they look for other opportunities. They look for uh, not only opportunities when it comes to making just a little bit more money, but uh, what I think where they end up missing is the culture in the company, and they uh, and, and where's the uh, the tenure time that you stay in one company? Uh, as of late, I see people jumping every year or two years from one company to the other just to make a, an additional couple of dollars more, and because the industry in general, all industries in general are, are suffering to find good talent. Uh, yeah, some people sure. are taking advantage of that. For sure. And uh, here's a couple of facts we'll just jump into about rogue employees. And of course, if you have a, a high turnover, you're likely to have a, a tougher culture. You know, the culture is probably not going to be as good because you're going to have a lot of influx of new people and your probability of rogue employees is going to go up uh, dramatically. And that's kind of why we wanted to do this. And, and there's also a lot of practical ways that you can protect yourself that we're going to discuss today. But here's just a couple stats. 89% of staff leave with the leave the company with at least one password that they use daily. 49% of employees logged into an account while no longer employed at the company. That's half of your people are you know, still able to access your systems. 
and 45% of X staff were able to access sensitive company data. That's like on your file shares and things of that nature, not managing your permissions right and allowing you know all users to have admin rights over your file structure or something. And then here's the final one here is 88% of X employees still had access to file sharing platforms. Those are things like Dropbox and uh, OneDrive and things of that nature, the Google Suite, they still have access to your data. So a lot of this is saying, in essence, Ikram, I'll let you weigh in on this, that mm -hmm. ultimately that companies are, they don't have a good hire fire policy um, is, is really that scream in that whenever all these people can still have access to company uh, things that is very much you know, easily locked out if you're paying attention to it. Yeah, not only I agree with you, Phil, but not only that, I mean, this is an offboarding issue, right? Employees yep. come in fast and then they leave fast. And then when you leave, you're like, all right, well, see ya. But what kind of data are they taking with them? Because nobody quits uh, not prepared. They quit with what the next step for them is and what yep. information they're taking from you and how they're taking it. And the fact that they can log in remotely after that you know, it shows this is where a good partner like you, Phil, or, uh, or like our company up north, is that what, that's what we focus on. We focus on who's got rights to what. And what, if they're not there, is there a spreadsheet or a, a, a checklist done to make sure that we hit everything that they had access to to be able to block them out properly? Because really, it's the data that's important. And that's what every company out there produces. They produce data and our job is to protect them and protect them from rogue employees as well. We had a client and I'll tell you this story real quick, uh, called us up and said, and he's, he's a developer, he builds buildings. So, I mean, what can he be holding in his network? Well, what he was holding is his pricing and his estimator quit and went to his competition and he took the price sheet with them. So now they can undercut him on a lot of different jobs. Things yeah. that you don't think of. For so sure. Commissioning and offboarding an employee properly really sits with IT and HR and needs to be done uh, well and it needs to be documented well and uh, deployed properly. Yeah, checked and rechecked even That's that right. it actually got done, not just assigned and not checked. Uh, because I've seen a lot of things that are assigned but not checked and they don't get done. Uh, I'll tell a quick war story that uh, we experienced. This was a staffing company, major staffing company that staffed for uh, technical people, for engineers and, uh, you know, architects, high-end type staffing. They had two of their employees that they basically stole all of the resumes and all of the records for people who were looking for jobs, posted them on their new company's, you know, information and was just stealing i mean just flat stole a ton of people and the way that they had it had it structured they could not prove that they did that although i'm telling you i know they did it uh but it couldn't be proved so that's just mm -hmm. things that we're we're dealing with let's start off we'll jump into a quick poll let me turn this poll on right here um how many people here have a, a an effective employee offboarding process. Let that go for just a couple minutes here and um, let everybody weigh in on that. This is something, you know, like as a guy, and, and Ikram, I know you've done this too, whenever you go in to do a network evaluation for a client, these are the type of things that turn the, the business owner's face red. Whenever you go in there and you show them that, yeah, you know what, there's there's, you know, this person ain't been here in, in three years and they're still there. All of their accounts are still active. So, all right. Yeah. In I the mean, I, okay. And I, I agree with you. That's, uh, you know, and, and, and no, we don't is a, is a, is a big thing to look at because uh, it's crucial, not only for protecting your data and, and, and yourself and your company, but your current employees that are, that want to work for you. And then that, that uh, you know, are bleeding your colors. Um, yeah, for sure. Having a solid offboarding process needs to be documented, approved by you, approved by HR, and then by IT. And as soon as something happens, it's very systematic at that time. And it's important yep. to understand how it works, how fast you could do it, how you can protect yourself. Yep, for sure. And we see here that, you know, we had 33% of folks have it, 56 don't, and 11 
um, are not sure, which I would put the 11 with the 56, because if you're not sure, you don't. So yeah. we got two thirds to a third, which is, is really, you know, not uncommon, but it gets you hurt. And I think, you know, Ikram, we've been doing this a long time and, you know, full disclosure, me and Ikram are, we've been in peer groups together and, you know, we're buddies and, you know, we, we share a lot of, of, you know, stories and everything, uh, business and personal, but, I mean, what I see is most tech people, most, you know, the, the business owner glazes over whenever it gets down to talking about tech, but we're really not talking about tech to our clients. I'm talking about risk management. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about right. something that's business related. And, uh, you know, any business owner worth his salt is going to be interested in that conversation uh, because you're not, you don't need the bits and bytes. You know, they just need to understand the general principles of what's happening and where the risk lives and how are you mitigating that risk. I couldn't agree with you more, but you got to think of it this way. You got to remember that everything you do now is online somewhere or in a system somewhere. Every conversation you have, somebody in your company is putting some kind of note somewhere. All your data, your pricing, your costing, your, your entire customer list. You, everything is available and you make it available for all the employees, but they're not, you know, there, there's okay. some that you could trust and some that are here for just a short period of time. So you want to protect your assets because that's what they are. And sure. you want to protect them from people leaving that may not have the same type of uh, integrity uh, you do. Yep. And, you know, one other thing, you know, that I'll make mention of is that all of the risk in standard businesses that we deal with, you know, small to mid-sized companies, all that risk really falls upon the business owner. He can say, yeah, so-and-so's got it taken care of. You know, I got a, I got this person or that person in this department or whatever, but the risk falls on the business owner. And I think sometimes they don't hear that. You know what I mean? They think that they're okay because, you know, we hear it all the time. I got a guy you know, that's right. managing their technology. Well, you know, buyer beware, because at the end of the day, you own the, the, uh, the outcome. So there is, but there's something to be done about that, right? You know, hiring somebody like an MSP that come in and run a scan and look at your shares and tell you where your risks are and do risk mitigation, like you said, and really put a plan together to make sure you understand and document and have policies and procedures so they understand where your risks are. And everybody can live with different levels of risk. But if That's you right. know your level and you know what options you have, then you could tell us and we could work together, pulling in the same direction, yeah. making sure that we secure you at the level that you want to be secured. Exactly. So, you know, talking about here is we're talking about detection of suspicious activity. And, you know, the the technology realm has really grown a lot in um uh, in the area of being able to, you know, read logs. And you, you talked about it earlier, you're talking about every, all of our data is living out there in a, in a drive or, you know, on a network or in a, a system or a platform or a, a software application. And the beauty of this is the fact that every bit of that has logs, meaning that everything you do is logged. And what these companies are, are doing to detect these types of suspicious activities is reading those logs. And whenever something out of whack happens, it alerts. And, you know, so there's been some real advancement in the technology realm uh, at a very cost effective rate. Uh, because most of the logs themselves are benign, meaning they don't have uh, personal identifiable information or, or, you know, it's just an activity against a file name or against that, that you're looking at. So what have you seen, uh, Ikram, as far as uh, things that, you know, that are, uh, you know, detecting that suspicious activity? You, you know, you said it well, you know, uh, people think of standard security like they're covered. Hey, I got a firewall. I got an antivirus on my machine. I'm I'm covered. In reality, that's not enough anymore, right? Yeah. Because you said it, if if something happens and it does happen every day and what we do, we see it every single day. Sure. The that's... first thing we hear is what happened and how yeah. are we going to find out what happened without the log file? That's yeah. where we're going to go read to tell you exactly what happened. So having a good 
uh, log, uh, log aggregating system like a SIM, having a good MDR, like a managed detection and response system built in into your security stack and how you manage what you have, not only would it allow us to know what happened, but it will also allow us to be alerted before it became a bigger issue. That's right, uh, yes. You know, so we can stop it from happening while it's trying to happen. So that's, it's all about the tools uh, that yep. you use and who's monitoring those tools. That's right. And here's some things that we're looking for uh, in general is just someone that's moving a lot of files. Somebody that is just touching a lot of files is, you know, that may be something that is, uh, that's, you know, that could be, you know, malicious. Uh, for instance, that particular company, they used a product, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, called Dropbox, a free application, and they simply loaded it on their machine. They uploaded all those documents using Dropbox. Now, of course, they cleared everything whenever they quit, so it couldn't be proven, but these third-party logged aggregate systems are uh, I'll use a kind of a technical term but they're they're uh, forensically sound meaning that the 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 uh, the logs themselves are backed up somewhere else third party so that they cannot be altered by anyone so that they're actually can be submitted as evidence which is a, an important part when we're talking about that but um, I don't know won't you won't you take these Ikram and weigh in on sending links sure. without explorations yeah so, I mean, uh, when you send something out, especially sending a link, and if you keep it open all the time and it, the link doesn't expire, well, you never know what's going to happen on the other side. You never know when somebody's mind may change and they now they're no longer your ally. Somebody uh, wants to be able to come in. And if the link is never going to expire, you don't remember you sent them a link six months ago, a year ago, and now they have access to it, whatever folder you gave them. So expiration limits on what you're sharing, how you're sharing it, even passwords. Like I see people share passwords and they're sharing what the password actually is. There is ways to share passwords without showing the person you're giving the password to what the password is you share, they copy, they don't see, they, they see asterisks. There's so many different ways to share data and not make it uh, attainable and really secure it and hold it uh, tight to your vest. And really it's your data and that's what you produce. No matter what you do, I don't care if you're development, you're an IT, you're, you're a doctor, you're a dentist, you're producing data of work you're doing and you're putting it in a system. And that data is what people are trying to steal. Yep, for sure. You know, logging in, you know, from outside, you know, outside of business hours. You know, that's another big flag. And these, we should, we should, you know, another kind of technical term is, you know, using artificial intelligence. And I'll let you explain what that is. It's really, um, it's, but go ahead, you, you can take that one. Sure. Okay. So uh, if you think of it this way, most people work nine to five. And then some people, let's face it, I feel like I work 24 hours a day, right? And I want to encourage all our employees to work as long as possible and to produce if they have the time, because work balance schedule is important. I mean, life work balance is important. But if you're working remotely and then you logged into the environment remotely and then you're copying a lot of files out of the environment, well, somebody needs to be alerted to that. Somebody needs to, to know what's happening. And um, until the alert comes in, it's built, the, the new software are built on AI, artificial intelligence. So it looks at different attributes of things changing and it I won't say it's smart, but it's smart enough. It's intelligent to be able to tell, hey, that this is, shouldn't be happening. You know, you shouldn't be copying tens of gigs off the network at nine o'clock at night. So you shouldn't nope. be copying it at all. So alerting, taking immediate action, AI will take immediate action and stopping it until somebody goes in and approves it. Uh, it protects you. Having the right tools protects you. And uh, they came down market right? The tools were very expensive and only enterprise would use them. Small, medium-sized businesses will benefit from that since more than 60% of small, medium-sized businesses are the target of hacks because they're easier target. They're low hanging fruit. So have the tools and have somebody in the SOC security operating center looking at what's happening in real time and protecting you. It's more than just yeah. insurance. It's really protecting your assets, like having a security guard on your most important assets, which is your data. Yeah. And then the last one there was just even low productivity, you know, being able to sense that a, per, a particular user uh, is, you know, is not 
not working. There's software out there that's you know, very affordable. And with the remote workforce that I don't see it going away, um, you know, we've got guys in California, you know, I mean, we're, we got, you know, people all over the globe, literally, that are working uh, for us. And I don't see that going away right now. I mean, you go through some offices, they're like freaking ghost towns where, you know, two years ago, it was a hustling, bustling office. Yeah. And, I, you know, uh, low pro productivity is a big piece. Some people, though, I talk to them and they're like, oh, I don't want to be big brother. I'm not that guy, you know. And you're not big brother. You're just protecting your own assets. And I said, would you protect your family and your and your your wife and your kids? Of course. Well, if you're going to protect them, they're stealing from you on the other side. Protect yeah, that too. Sure. Yeah, and that's right. And again, if if it's done in a proper manner, um, you know, I mean, I could explain very easily, you know, why you want to have eyes on things and knowing where you are because at the end of the day. Um, I always use the analogy like we're all in the Mayflower and we're coming to the new world and, you know, we got what we got and we got enough to pull it off, you know, uh, but if uh, you don't want to have uh, one guy poking holes in the boat while the rest of the guys are rowing. That's right. So. Let's talk, we'll jump in and, and kind of transition a little bit about what types of security protections will actually stop rogue employees. And we'll start here with blocking applications. Most companies don't even know what the people have on their machines in the first place. And uh, but there's ability, very relatively easy if you're using standard, you know, firewalls and softwares that are uh, there that'll actually stop um, applications from being able to be loaded. One would be Dropbox. Dig into the Dropbox thing because it's so, uh, I mean, it's so prevalent. Uh, I've seen many, many, many um, bad uses of Dropbox. Besides the fact that they got hacked a million times, you know, that, that goes without saying. Your data is already out there somewhere. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, blocking application is, I, I see it as the uh, ultimate offense when it comes to security. To, to basically create a whitelist application list of what can run in the environment. So we don't have to worry about somebody clicking on something they're not supposed to click and that's not doing it, not maliciously. You know, they're just, you know, browsing or they got an email and they clicked on something and they're not aware that they downloaded malware that's running in the background and now gonna cause havoc later, you'll have ransomware or whatever it may be. Blocking, having a whitelist and only allowing those applications to run is uh, is a very smart way to do it uh, and to be able to stop that from happening. That's one way to, to look at it and to make sure that you, you know what's running on your network. And some, but you're right, there is a lot of different uh, application that can be running through a browser that can cause issues. We just wanna make sure that the end, end device is protected and secured. Yep. And others like Facebook, Netflix, I got to, and Facebook kind of cuts both ways. I think knowing how much time they're spending on it, you know, some people want to be cool, you know, like, look, you know, if you got to quick this or quick that, you're going to be on there for a minute. It's a way to relieve stress that that can build a good culture. You don't want somebody burning up the whole day on social media. Uh, there are some risks on social media as well, but I got a great story about Netflix. We had a client that uh, very in a rural, very rural area, and they had to, uh, a, a large set of data that they had to move on a consider uh, on a constant basis. So we we uh, got fiber optics internet for them. So they went from like a really a, like an old T1 line or a bonded T1. You know, we're talking something very very slow to something fast like 50 megs or whatever. And the guy, the owner was like, we got it in. He was so happy, man. Everything was working great. About two weeks later, we, uh, he's like, I don't know what's happened, but this thing is just slow, slow, slow. Come to find out, and you're not even going to believe this, 10, they have about 40 employees. 10 of their employees were streaming Netflix. <laughs> burn, burn it. They got that fast internet connection, and we had ten streams of Netflix uh, that we discovered running in that environment. And you know, and these are the tools. If these tools were in place, you'd have been able to tell it right away and tell them yeah. exactly what's happening. It's not Big Brother; it's protecting your assets, and yeah. your employees should 
be pulling in the same direction you're pulling. That's right. That's exactly right. And then, of course, porn. I forget what the stat is, but it's above 50 percent. People yeah. serve porn on the uh, on the clock. And uh, working from home, I mean, it's probably even worse than that if you really were to, uh, you know, if you really were to you know, look at it. So, and again, you know, that's, you know, that's cool. But I mean, most most business owners aren't cool with their employees getting paid to serve porn. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that again. Yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some security uh, protections. What's MFA, multi-factor authentication? So for uh, multi-factor authentication is your authentication is your password, right? So that's single factor, which is you go in username, password, you enter it and you go in. But after you log in with your password and make sure it's you, well, is it really you or did somebody get your password somewhere else? So it will then give you a code that where you have to another device that you've already registered and you have to use the code that changes every 20 seconds uh, to be able to actually get access. And that kind of stops hackers in that in their Spot is because they're not, even if they have your password, on the, they got it from the dark web or they loaded something on your machine because you don't have an application whitelisting solution, but they loaded something that's a key logger and it's tracking what you're typing and then they get that information. One of our clients had a key logger on their machine. The hacker was able to log into their banking and use their password because now they know what it is. And then they were drawing $4,950 a week out of their bank account wow. uh, and it's below the five thousand dollar threshold so they never got alerted and it took them six months to figure out that that was happening you know yes they had a lot of money in a bank account and they weren't able to tell right away but six months that's five thousand dollars a week give or say it's a lot of money so yeah, multi-factor right. authentication is key if you're going to log in remotely you're going to log into your bank you're going to log into your machines make sure that you add that additional layer of the codes that are going to change every 20 seconds and it will secure you, make you feel better uh, and make you sleep better at night because you know that even if somebody has your password, they can't access your data. And that's a great way from rogue employee standpoint. If everyone's using that, you can clip their uh, multi-factor like you assign. the. Uh, we use Duo, but you can use Google Authenticator. You can use Microsoft Authenticator. There's a lot of them out there. But if you clip that, they could have the username and password. But without that account open, they can't log in. They're just like a bad guy now with your with their with their own password. And you need to think about this on all applications and it's better to do it with an like an application on your phone than say email because what if they hacked your email and they're sitting on top of your email and they're now they're able to get those multi-factor the codes are coming in on email so it's better to use the application uh all the time and i don't know if you've seen this but this um i don't know i call them lapses uh is a they're a, a rogue uh, group out in the, uh, you know, out, you know, the one of these are the bad guys basically, yeah. and they're called lapsus dollar sign. They're paying rogue employees, employees. They have a standing order. They'll pay $10,000 for credentials to a network. Yeah. And you got to think about even like multi-factor on VPNs when you're logging in from home, you need to be able to hit a, you know, get the code off of your phone to punch in, not just your username and password to the VPN, because if that got compromised, now the bad guys are getting in. We saw that with the champion pipeline breach. That's how they got in and uh, encrypted the, you know, the fuel company's uh, pipeline so that, you know, the whole East coast was, you know, had a big uh, shortage. That's probably been about a year ago. So you multi-factor know, uh, is very effective. I'm glad effective. you said dual. I'm glad you said Duo. It's a great product. It's the product everybody should have. Yes, you could use others. It's not the only one. But having multi-factor authentication is that extra step that even if your password got hacked, even if somebody found out what it was, it, nobody can bypass multi-factor. Not yet, anyway. Uh, nobody can bypass multi-factor because it changes all the time. And it's linked to a device that has your number on it. And it sees your face. And it's maintained by you. Don't use, I agree with you, Phil, the multi-factor through email, it's better than not having it, but yep. it's not as good as having a true multi-factor solution that really protects your environment. 
That's right. And I would insist that I call it one to many. Anytime you have one username and one password and you can access many records, like uh, whatever business applications you everyone's running, you need to have it on that application because somebody could, and a lot of these are, you know, software as a service, meaning they run in a, you know, web browser basically, and you could log into them from home or, you know, from the office or from a bad guy in Russia. So you really want to have those things locked down. And I'm a little surprised every, you know, occasionally I come across, you know, pretty big companies that have software uh, as a service products and they do not have uh, multi-factor embedded, even in today's world, they don't even have the capability of doing it yet. But I see that occasionally. Uh, we do too. And we always push for multi-factor. As a matter of fact, if you're working with us, um, multi-factor is a necessity. It's part of yep. what we what we do, and we won't let anybody go without it. It protects them, and protects us, and it's just a a, a better, smarter way to uh, to do security. Yep, and um, and then uh, again, you can clip the rogue employee, or when the employee uh, lets go, that's the first thing you clip, and they can't even get into anything. That's right. Let's talk a little bit about file management. You know, some access and. And encryption. Uh, this is just regular files that your employees might have uh, or do have access to to some of them. But we'll kind of work down this list right here about just access in general. How many times you go into a place and you run the scan and to see who's got permissions to the file shares and everybody in the company's got permissions and you know it's the owner's folder where he's got all the payroll you know what he's paying everybody and the hr person where they got the 401k excel spreadsheet yada 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 you know how many times you see that uh all the time and it's usually a surprise what what you mean sally uh, has access to everybody's uh, hr records yes yeah, she uh, does and you left it wide open as a matter of fact the person you just hired as an intern also has access to them and Nobody's really thinking about, they're just mapping a drive and thinking about the security within it. You have to. And encryption next is a big piece because if it's encrypted and you got somebody from the outside trying to take it, well, even if they copy your files, they won't open outside your environment. Yeah. Uh, so, so having encryption, uh, we had a, a, a company where the CFO happened to be the, the disgruntled one. So he oh, had access wow. to, to everything. And he just wanted, he copied all his files out, but we had encryption on the network and he copied everything. I mean, we also had a SIM, so we got all the logs. He copied everything he could possibly get and left and then called and quit. But then he called me and saying, hey, I can't open these files at home. I was like, you're right, you can't. Yeah. And he, I'll go, you bought the security. It worked against you. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't know what he was buying. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, well, can I bypass this? I'm like, no, <laughs> you, 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 yeah. you know, so you, you never know what it is. And having encryption to your stack of security tools, it's key, uh, especially yeah. to protect files. Yeah. And like file sharing uh, expirations, again, a rogue employee could go in and create a bunch of files email them uh, file links, you know, like where a lot of times people, what I'm talking about where people would use this is if you're emailing something that's really too big to email and you'll create like an extension, you know, to it so that the other person will go to a web browser and then download it. And, you know, so that, cause it's too big to pass over email, but the expiration, even you can encrypt that you can uh, put passwords uh, on it and all kinds of measures because even you know a rogue employee could just send themselves a ton of links out and then go home and download all those files very easily or any why you want to put expiration on them and maybe even passwords is because what i have seen is where someone gets their email account hacked and all of a sudden you've got all these files that have ever been shared that the bad guy can go and scan the entire, you know, uh, email account and they see all these. So now they have access to even more things that are internal to the network, not just the email itself. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Phil, uh, you, you, you said it is that they have access to it. And if it doesn't expire to have access to it forever. And if somebody is malicious, uh, can really, uh, do a lot of damage. 
And we're, but we're talking about a stack of tools that came down market so much, it doesn't make sense not to have them all implemented. Oh, for, you, yeah, you, for sure. You know? And then, of course, that logging and reporting uh, is so critical. Um, you know, having it to where even, and you know, like we've, I've gained, I gained a, a, a really large client earlier this year, 10 location client, fastest close I ever did one day. And uh, because they got, they got breached. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it usually helps push them along. <laughs> yeah, sadly. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you know, I don't wish that on anybody, but uh, anyway, the, uh, the, uh, the deal was, is that, the bad guys deleted the logs. You know, that's one of the standard things they do. And it caused that cyber liability insurance, fortunately, but that company came in and I want our business people to understand how insurance works. You know, that company, the cyber liability insurance company bought your risk. There was a transfer of risk for a, a price that you paid for the policy. That company, of course, and these uh, cyber liability insurance have some awesome teams that come in and they'll do, you know, depend upon what your policy covers, but it'll do everything from public relations to uh, forensics, like, and that's what held them up. It held them up from working because they were trying to recover those logs to see how much risk they had really had, you know, because they wanted to know and they couldn't get on their system because they were trying to recover the logs. And it was, uh, that's something that you have to think about from a disaster recovery standpoint is if something bad were to happen and you don't have this correctly configured, that the actual people who are helping you could actually prevent you from going back to work because they had to keep that system pristine uh, in order to, uh, you know, to have the, you know, the chain of custody of, and everything. So something, to, something to think about. Sure. Another thing here is, you know, coffee, uh, copier scanners and, you know, they have these machines that literally you can stick a bunch of uh, documents in and you can scan them right out of the network to an email box to a Dropbox to a to wherever you want to go with. And, you know, you want to have access controls knowing who is um, sending those files, you know, like who used the copier. You know, and it, again, these uh, all these devices are so awesome at date, time stamping down to the second with what user did what, and they're all put in those logs. That uh, if if you've got good logging software, you can uh, you can really know who could be trying to hurt you. So if you want to weigh in on yeah, that, yeah, copiers uh, and printers and scanners, they're no longer just a mechanical device that's going to print for you. They're a computer. They have a network, they, uh, they're connected to the network, they have an IP, and they have software running on it. As a matter of fact, back, uh, you know, copiers sometimes come with FTP, file transfer protocol servers already running uh, embedded, on them, embedded uh, which uh, should be stopped and, and blocked and what have you, but people don't think of it. There's a copier, just, just let it be. It's not just as easy as that. Yes, it does a great job with, uh, with logging, but if you're going to get rid of a copier, make sure that they shred the hard drive that's in it. If the copier is going to be able to scan, it's going to be part of your network, you got to use the same type of security access control and logs that you do on every other device, on these devices as well. Everything became a computer. I mean, for heaven's sakes, your thermostat now is a computer. And that's just another computer running on the wall with a small screen. Yeah. Internet of things. Everything is connected to your network. That means there's more doors for hackers and malicious employees to use those doors to come in and cause havoc. So when you think of security, and especially when it comes to copiers, copiers can hold your, your entire, they have big hard drives in them. They can yeah. hold all your data in them. And the reason why they do it that way is to make it easier so that you could say, hey, listen, I always print this file. Instead of having to go to my machine and open Word and then print it, I can go to the copier and click print and the file is on it. Well, if yep. that's going to happen, that can cause risks. Uh, because the files are now accessible. We had a, a, a new partner who uh, got hacked because of their top and they found data of their, their healthcare organization for their patients that was on a hard drive that was uh, in a copier that's no longer being used. And uh, somebody bought that copier, found the drive, 
took the data off of them and called them and said, listen, I have all your data. I'm going to go public unless you pay me off. True story. Think yep. about that. For sure. Yeah. You know? And there's also encryption that will go on those drives. Now, if you buy the copier, it's like an add on. It costs more, but I mean, not a lot more, but they'll actually encrypt those drives, self encrypting drives on those. That's something you want to think about whenever uh, for office equipment. So true. Let's talk about some financial uh, controls as far as internally. This is something that I have been uh, exposed to. I can't remember multiple times. I think of two that came out uh, that that come to mind where, um, you know, somebody was basically cutting the checks. Somebody was uh, was paying the bills, you know, checking the mail. You know, everything was held in one accounting person. And a lot of uh, small businesses operate that way because they don't have the staff in order to put financial controls in place. And you leave yourself very vulnerable to your accounting person. Uh, it's something that, um, you know, you want to have a separation of duties. Tell me some more stories. I know you've seen it. I've seen it. So I'm going to tell you this. I We recommend that for... The people that log in remotely and log into your bank account and download your ledger and then uh, does some of your accounting, for them to do that on a machine that is just dedicated for that financial uh, tool. And we say, all right, it doesn't have to be a powerful machine. It could be a used one, formatted, clean, and all you do on it is when you you boot it up, you turn it off when you're done. You boot it up, you log into your bank, you download the information, you take it, and then now you're able to consume it internally, you turn off that machine. So that machine has a very low opportunity to be hacked because it's yeah. off all the time. You're only using it a few minutes a day. It's impossible for it to be hacked. And if you're able to do that, and then you're able to have financial controls in place, the person that checks the mail uh, and the person that reconciles the invoice, you have to have somebody that holds the other person accountable. So you got to yeah. think of it that way. If I'm going to do this, somebody else is checking that. If that person is doing this, this function, well, you know, you can't have the person that buys equipment also receive the equipment, yep. right? Because then who, where's the checks and balances here? Because I and can buy whatever I want, receive it and say, hey, I use this in the inventory. And then and all of a sudden you have, you have that risk. So yeah. it's important to know. And then a lot of companies are smaller to have one person. Okay, one person makes it easier. But in that case, use a different machine to do that work because that's what hackers are going after. Hackers yeah. will log into your bank account, will do a wire transfer on your behalf, and will take every penny you got. For sure. You yeah. know, something that um, yeah, that we do here that, uh, you know, it's taken time to kind of, you know, as your operational maturity level goes up, but one person's checking the mail. One is doing, of course, the ordering. One is doing the reconciliation of all the invoices, and the other person is paying all the bills. And then that is all goes to our accountants who on a quarterly basis reviews all the activity. And then I spot check and I'm still the only guy. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Sometimes I'm still the only guy that, that signs checks here. Yeah, me and, too, actually. Same yeah, here. I, I'm yeah. very nervous of uh, not that, you know, because every time I've ever seen something bad happen with an employee that was stealing, it was, uh, oh, they were. They were, um, um, you know, basically they were borrowing some money from the company and they were going to pay it back. Well, what happened is, is they borrowed it and it was like, damn, that was sweet. And uh, like a stolen watermelon. Ikram, you wouldn't understand <laughs> that living in Buffalo. <laughs> but stolen watermelons are sweeter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they would, uh, they, you know, they do it and they're all intention. I mean, I believe them truthfully, they were going to pay it back. And then they didn't get caught. Well, it was easy, you know, so they did it again. They did it again. Before you know it, they rack up tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars. This one company, this lady wasn't paying the guy's taxes. And I'm talking about screwed him up for five years with the IRS. And the IRS was brutal. Penalized him and interest him up, boy. And uh, so you really want to look into your financial controls as it relates to um, employees and you know, I trust my staff. I, I honestly do. I don't think they'd ever hurt me. But, uh, you know, it's uh, trust but verify for sure, especially That's in this it. area, because, you know, everybody goes through a hard time. And, uh, you know, you're protecting them, 
you know, as much as you're protecting, you know, everybody. So I weigh in heavy on that because I've seen a couple of people get hurt really, really, really bad. And uh, the one, that one, literally that lady kept their boys when they were little. I mean, she wow. was a lifelong friend, man. So it busted up a relationship. It was very painful for everybody involved. So let's talk about remote and on the go staff. Probably every company nowadays is working remotely. I bet 80, 90% of the companies I deal with at some point have some people working remotely. So let's talk about some ways to, uh, to do that. Um, this one here, I don't know, this is something that we do is um, we're using a product and I'll tell everybody what it is. It's called Active Track. You familiar yeah. with that? Yeah, we use that. Okay, cool. Uh, well, talk, talk to us about it. So Active Track, which by the way, I'll tell you, I didn't tell you the story yet, Phil, so everybody will hear it at the same time, but uh, we're growing, you know, and so I wanted to hire a controller uh, above and beyond the uh, accountant that we have working for us and the, his team. I wanted to get somebody that will do some analysis from a CFO perspective and look at where we're spending money, where we're not spending money, how to make, it, how to make us better. So I went outside my comfort zone, hired somebody that makes 150 plus, you know, somebody that has 10 years experience at Citibank as a, uh, a forensic accountant, somebody that has experience with businesses. And I went outside my comfort zone, spent a lot of money and hired this person. Uh, she came in gung ho, you know, and I was like, you're going to be the leader here. I want you to understand what we do, how we do it, how it's broken down. So I was giving her the time to spend uh, understanding what we do, because what we do is a little complicated, and we sure. have a lot, uh, what I call lots of littles, you know, yeah. this tool and that tool and this other thing, and, you know, it's lots of little. So I wanted to give her the time to do it, and she started, you know, to, she asked some questions at first, I'm like, all right, and then, and then she started, I was like, all right, well, where is your feedback now? A month went by, two months went by, I was like, okay, let's meet, what are you working on? And so I decided to put active track on her machine just to see what's happening. So 72% of her time was spent on uh, solitaire. Oh my gosh. Now I tell you what, it killed me inside and I was staring at it and seeing her playing solitaire and she wasn't that good. You know, I, I would have won some of the games. I felt like that, sending her a team's message and saying, please move the red queen underneath the black king you're gonna lose this game if you don't make that you know i laugh about it now because we discovered it and we were able to cut our losses and move on with our life but this is somebody that is got hired as a cfo that came with 10 years experience that had the resume to back it up somebody that really did great i had her being interviewed by six of our managers and a coach that I work with, and everybody loved her. She was great. She talked right. She had all the right stories. She just wasn't a worker and didn't care and didn't care what's happening. Now, this is a, a fairly new employees, but we have that running on some of the people that work remotely. And, and uh, some of my clients, I, I showed it to them and they're like, well, I don't want to be big brother. You're not. If they're producing, you don't have to keep watching it. I mean, yeah, it's not only a problem. Every, yeah, it's, it's only, only a problem, problem <laughs> if there's a problem. That's right. That's right. Yeah. If if everybody is doing their work, there's no problem. We're going to move on with our life. You're not trying to hurt them. You're just trying to make sure that for what you're paying them for, they're producing what you expect them to produce. And I actually put active track on our machine. I said, I bet you she's spending a lot of time somewhere else. And I'm just going to guide her to where she needs to spend her time on, you know? Uh, and uh, she was spending her time somewhere else uh, on solitaire, oh. and she was listening to crime mystery podcasts the entire oh. time. She would come in at 8.30 on time every morning and automatically open solitaire and sit at it. Wow, I tell you. But some of the things that you're, the, the data that you're gathering, I'll kind of run down it real quick, and uh, let's see where we are on time. Yeah, um, we uh, were talking about, like, real-time user activity screenshots they even gamified an active track where you're able to um you're able to kind of com 
uh, compete with other people just to uh, from a, a productivity standpoint. It's watching what applications and website uses that you're using so that you can you know quantify whether those uh, things are business related or personal related and it classes everything out, breaks it out. And then it gives you uh, those productivity reports that can uh, that can show your uh, your overall things where you could, you know, gamify it and kind of, you know, put some competition uh, in there and things like that. And, and we do that a la carte, just to let you know, we, we don't say you don't, you don't have to put it everywhere on every single machine, but some of your key employees that you don't see, or some of the people that perform for you, and you're not sure if you have a doubt, just make sure you use a tool like this to eliminate that doubt from your mind. We run it. I tell you, one of the main reasons what sold me on it initially was the fact that it is forensic, meaning that it has that chain of custody so that it can't be altered by anybody. And we log into clients' machines. And I want to be, uh, you know, above all reproach in, the, in that if we do something on a person's machine, it's it's getting logged. So yeah. if there's ever a question, did somebody log into my machine? Did it happen? When did it happen? What did they do? Blah, blah, blah. I have every bit of that information. And I can't remember by default. It keeps it for like a year and a half or something yeah. by default. So even yeah. if it happened a few months back, we can go back and, and uh, put that timeline together. Yeah. Another thing about um, employees is um, you know mobile device management. And a lot of people are using your bring your own device uh, kind of things into uh, – into this uh, system, um, you know, where, you know, they're bringing their own phone. And the good news is that, it, especially if you're using Microsoft 365, is that it can actually kind of partition the phone without really the user knowing so that you can do remote wiping, meaning that if the employee quits you and they wouldn't take your email off their phone or your data off their phone, your OneDrive off their phone, you can hit a button and it doesn't wipe out all their baby pictures and then they'll sue you it takes off only the business applications it can do geolocation so that you can see that uh you know where people are as well as encryption on that device which um yeah, it's very important that anything that's mobile that has personal identifiable information, you want to make sure that it's encrypted. Because again, I left, I forgot, I left my phone the other day somewhere. Uh, and uh, of course, it didn't take long because, you know, you touch your phone all the time. But I left my phone that could have easily been stolen. Uh, it was there long enough to be stolen at a restaurant. So what's your thoughts on mobile device management? Uh, so I recommend it to everybody that has data or have access to their data through their mobile device. So if they have email, if they have, um, you know, access to bank accounts, whatever it may be, if you have that on your mobile device, you should definitely have it. And I actually call it selective wiping because then we can select what we're going to wipe because That's it right. could be their personal device. And we don't want to make sure you're right. We don't want to delete their baby pictures because then you're liable, but we could delete your own data and that's fine. As a matter of fact, one of our clients is a healthcare organization um, and they uh, don't allow phones in the environment, but more and more people were bringing them in. So we put mobile device management with uh, uh, geofencing around yeah. their, their uh, building. And as soon as you walk in through the, 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 through the door, now they, the, the phone knows that you're in that facility and the camera icon disappears off the, the, the list. They can't take pictures. They can't use the phone. They can also, they can only receive, and we allowed that to happen. We can only receive um, text messages and emails that have to do, uh, that uh, emails for work and then text messages is uh, because of personal emergencies or what have you. But the camera icon disappears. They can't yeah, take a picture cool. of what you're doing inside. As soon as you walk out, the camera icon reappears. You know, there is That's a lot awesome. of control uh, yeah, to be done sure. around there. And uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of step us up. We're pretty close here to end in time, but I always like to end right on time. What about physical security as it relates to rogue employees? You know, in the IT world, we say physical access is the best access. Uh, you know, I mean, if you want to hack a server, it'd be a lot easier if you got your hands on it, right? Uh, That's right. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, some things like clean desk policy, badge access to filing room, uh, to filing cabinets, so that yeah, we've got one too. Yeah. And, uh, and they're not expensive. Those systems are not expensive. And again, they're forensically logged, so that if somebody comes into my office, 
you know, we don't even have locks on the doors. I mean, literally, that is the lock on the door. You Correct. scan, yep. that's how you get in, and it's logged. So uh, badge access, and then again, you know, security cameras. Um, one quick note on security cameras is that you want to make sure who has access to them. Okay. Because I've seen some places where people went in and deleted the uh, the actual records. So that's important uh, to to say yeah. there. That's, that's right. I mean, you said it there. I mean, I, I, there's not much to add, but uh, physical security is where you work. This is where your stuff is, usually where your filing is. Uh, so you want to make sure it's protected, cameras on the in and out, and bad security across the board. Yep. So let's jump into this. Like, what do you do if if you've got a um, a rogue employee? You know, let's let's just talk through some you know, some basic highlights on what you want to do. Okay. So. Uh, you're, you're saying it there, but basically, you know, having a solid backup and disaster recovery solution in place, no matter what happens and what uh, somebody hacked you, the employee became rogue and started deleting your files or started copying your files out, whatever it may be, if they put your network at a, in a jeopardy, you always want to be able to go back and restore whatever they did. So having a solid backup and disaster recovery solution in place that looks at your servers and your data and backs itself itself up every 10 minutes so that you're never you're no longer 24 hours behind in the backups or what have you it happens all the time it's key and then what happens if so what happens if something happens an incident happened what is your automatic response to that who are you going to call first then who are they going to call and what are you going to do after that documenting that and working with a solid IT provider will help you create that plan and an incident, incident response plan is it's key to having a solid disaster recovery solution in play. I like to call it disaster recovery and business continuity because the disaster happened, but we still got to work. That's right, for sure. And, you know, like remote wiping of their devices, what we would do here immediately, we would um, go and disable their multi-factor authentication because everything that we do is multi-factored. So without that application we use Duo, without Duo, really there's nothing they can do to hurt me. And then we start going through and we 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 take everything else away. And then we look at logs to make sure that there's nothing that we've missed. Exactly. All right. And then uh, let's talk about policies and why they are important just in general. Um, you know, I've been a professional witness a couple of times, uh, in some cases and the policy. And one thing you want to remember about a policy, and this could be like an acceptable use policy on the internet or on a workstation or uh, a sanction policy where you say, if this happens, this is the repercussions that are going to happen to you. And you, of course, you get all that. Normally, you would want to get it in when you when you hire somebody, but you need to have your staff sign those policies because they have acknowledged them, and that alone goes a long way uh, in the overall protection of your company. And you know, I think that, and we all understand that we can't protect everything. We can't be there. We can't stop every bad thing from happening. But if we have some policies where we've basically transferred the risk of that to the actual employee, where, you know, if they're the ones making the mistake in the, in the event of going rogue and trying to hurt you, that really will help your organization in the big picture of things. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with you completely. I mean, think of uh, being certified, mis-certified or CMMC, which I know you just got your certification. Congratulations. But which is a lot of work, uh, but it's all based around policies and procedures because IT can only block certain things. And yes, we'll block the door or make sure you're protected there. But what happens if that's where the policy comes in? You, can, you gotta allow people to have access to certain things because they gotta do some work. Well, you have to have the policy about what they can do with the things they have access to, right? Yep. And, and that's what it's all about. People hire us to create policies and procedures for them, just that, you yep. know, and to go through it. We get hired from a lot of manufacturing facility to be CMMT certified. Well, we have to go through the entire their entire policy set. And we recommend all employees sign it once a year and usually put it in the employee manual so all your policies are there. They're not signing 100 different documents. They're just signing one that has everything in it. And they said, I read it and I understand why. 
And if everybody has a good understanding of what the policies are, then people are pulling the same direction. And then the IT side is to make sure the policies help get implemented. That's right, for sure. And then we talked a little bit about how to successfully do that already. We'll we'll kind of touch on that. You could pick us up offline for sure if you want to talk about how to implement that. But uh, as far as from an incident response disaster recovery, if I took somebody out, this was some study that was done, and literally you wrote a disaster recovery plan on a napkin over lunch, you recover 65% faster. So true. That's how little effort goes a long, long, long way. And we want to remember that. So we got one last poll here. Let me uh, fire this poll up. Um, so how confident are you that your current security protections will protect against rogue employees? Like if somebody right now wanted to hurt you, you know, how safe do you feel basically? Are you confident? You're not confident or you're not sure? Let that go just for a little bit longer because we're really actually at the at the uh at the mark right here, but we'll go just a little longer. We'll cut that off there. That's most everybody. And nobody's confident. <laughs> So that kind of, um, you know, that lends itself to um, to really the next thing here is that for the folks on the call, we'll give you guys what I've been doing lately is what I call a free second opinion. And I really, it doesn't, whoever you're using, I'm not going to come in there and try to unseat them. I'm going to come and do the right thing. And I'm going to show you some things that I see and um, as a business owner, and show you how to, uh, you know, weigh out some of the risk and uh, in a uh, from from an experienced position, and then um, you know take a look at it and let you make those decisions. Because again, I always stress that you know at the end of the day, um, the risk lands on the business owner for most every company that I, that I work for or Ecom works for they're not these big corporate companies where there's a you know where there's some risk on a, a ownership level it's usually going to fall all the way and it includes some things like checking for your email to make sure it's right uh, those are those things. We're going to do some simulated phishing attacks to test your employees. I want to look at your Office 365 because about 75, 80% of uh, risk come in on email. Most people do not have their email set up at all as it relates to security or for rogue employees. And there's those, again, those logging tools that can alert you. And then, uh, you know, having some documents. Whenever we talk about security, in the IT world, it's really a three-legged stool. You've got your, you know, your uh, your governance or your documents, your policies that you want to have people sign a lot of those. Then you've got your actual um, physical security that we talked about a little bit, and then you've got your tech technology security. And all three of those have to kind of gel and work together in order to be effective. And then we want to look at your cyber liability insurance. If you don't have it, when you hang up off this call today. Go get you a cyber liability insurance policy. Email me. I'll turn you on to a couple companies because you can't, the, the, I mean, even a little risk nowadays with the way it all works, a little breach, a little security incident is 10, 20, 30, 50 grand. Like that's a small one. And you're going to spend that just like that. Um, and then, of course, looking at the overall disaster recovery plan and, um, you know, what does that look like for you guys? Uh, well, I got to tell you, Phil, this is a great, uh, free option here. I can't believe you're giving it for free uh, because it's a lot of work that you'd be doing. So for sure. whoever's on the call, whoever's going to see this later, jump on this. I'm telling you as a, as a third opinion, if you will, uh, it's, uh, it's the things to look for and the links to look at right away to make you sleep better at night and giving it away for free. It's, it's a lot of hours that Phil and his team will have to spend uh, looking at all this stuff and it's worth the time and make yourself understand where you stand. So it's a great offer, uh, by yeah. the way. Well done. For sure. And then, uh, of course, we want to say thank you, Christy. I don't know if you know, there's any questions or anything. I know we're out of time. I went over. I apologize to everybody. But um, 
we had two questions come in, but y'all seem to kind of answer them. One being, what about people taking pictures or recordings with their cell phones? And I think y'all handled that with the geo um, fencing. And yep. then the other was, how do you prevent management from taking files when they have to have access to everything? Yeah, you just have to log what they're taking. You yeah. have to know what they're taking. And there's there's tools out there that will tell you. And, um, you know, they uh, and also some of them will alert you whenever they're taking a, a large amount of them that would be uh, out of out of normal. Um, it's like that artificial intelligence. It looks at things and it sees what they normally do on a normal basis. And when things get out of whack, it, it throws an alert to say, hey, this is suspicious or or non um, non regular or non normal type activities and encryption. You could add encryption to certain files yep. so they can only open them on uh, machines that are managed by the company. So they can't open them at home. They can't yep. open them somewhere else. Even if they send them out, they won't be able Even to if, open them at home. That's right. Yep. So, so this, Phil, this was great. Thank yeah, you for including me. You, I appreciate you, man. Good to yeah. see you as always. For sure. Thank you, Groom, and thank everyone. Thank you, Christy, for putting this together. I know there'll be a recording if you'd like it. Uh, you know, we can get it out to you. We're here always to help. There's our website. There's a phone number to call. And there's, if you have questions about this, you can always email security at AskBIS. We're here to uh, make the world a safer place. Yes, right. Amen to that. All right, guys. Have a, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. See you guys soon.